If you're an athlete, you know the greatest motivator of all is the fear of letting your teammates down. After all, a team is only as good as its weakest link. So you owe it to those wearing the same jersey as you to be your best every time you step on the field. That's why there's no vape in team. When you vape, you can expose your lungs to toxic chemicals that can damage your lungs. If you're a step behind, the team's a step behind. Brought to you by The Real Cost and the FDA. Spinner. Welcome to Notebook, your guide to art, culture and tourism here in Tokyo and throughout Japan. I'm Stuart Munro, and around this time each Monday, Wednesday and Friday, I'll be sharing local news and views. On today's episode, we track down art in Shinagawa and Midtown. But first, eSports. The International Olympic Committee has announced details of the Olympic eSports Series 2023, a global virtual competition created by the IOC in collaboration with international federations and game makers. The games will span nine different sports, from archery to baseball, chess, cycling, dance, motorsport, sailing, taekwondo and tennis, culminating for the very first time in live in-person finals at Singapore Suntech Centre from June 22nd to 25th. The inaugural event in 2021 was the very first Olympic licensed event for virtual sports, open to both professional and amateur players from around the world. As Japan reported 13,950 new coronavirus cases on Wednesday, with just 952 in Tokyo, the number of visitors to Japan is beginning to return to normal. Underscoring this is the Amidia, the first foreign cruise ship to arrive in the country in almost three years, after it docked earlier this week in Shizuoka. Cruise ships to Japan made over 1,900 port calls in 2019, attracting roughly 2.15 million tourists, spending an estimated 80.5 billion yen. But the mass coronavirus outbreak aboard the Diamond Princess in February 2020, having pulled into Yokohama port, led to all foreign ships being banned from March 2020 onwards. Now a recent Kyodo News survey expects a rapid increase in similar vessels. 89 arrivals are expected in 23 of Japan's 42 main ports this month, almost as many as the 125 ships to dock in March three years ago. And finally, Kintetsu Railway has announced plans to start a new service in Mie Prefecture, aimed at attracting cyclists from large cities by allowing them to carry bicycles on board unbagged. The cycle train Keta, as it's called, will be operated up to six times from March to May, mainly between Osaka Uenomachi or Kintetsu Nagoya stations and Kashi Kojima Station in Shima. The special service will use a three-car sightseeing train originally used for tour groups to carry up to 50 passengers, with one car set aside for bicycles. The service was started last September, allowing passengers with bicycles aboard the Toba and Shima lines during regular service, as well as the Yamada line at weekends and during holidays. As spring blows into March with the first sign of warmer weather this year, the refactory art fair comes to town. An art fair that shares its agenda either by design or by pure chance, with another exhibition across town at the 2121 design site. One of the artists on display is Ken Kugami, poking fun at contemporary art. His work playfully borrows from street culture, pop art, art brute and performance, but rarely digs into its relentless production as cynical as it is critical of the contemporary art being aped. So it seems fitting that Ken is one of a handful of artists and galleries taking part in Refactory, Meet Your Art 2023, an art fair at the Toreda Warehouse in Higashi Shinagawa, close to Tenazawa Station on the outskirts of Tokyo Bay. Unique work by 28 different artists, from Distressed Photography by Daisuke Okota and Tactile Imagery by Mayumi Hosokura to canvas graffiti by Enrico Isami Hoyama and kinetic sculpture by the artist Ujino, all make Meet Your Art a counterpoint to another exhibition opening today, the original at 2121 Design Site Museum in Tokyo Midtown, an exhibition of objects and everyday items that have somehow fulfilled a unique role in shaping the everyday. 2121 Design Site is at the heart of Tokyo's shopping and entertainment district, whereas the Toreda Warehouse is in a part of town that didn't exist until 30 years ago. It's an area so unique 
that it's been entirely shaped by its recent past. The so-called new waterfront area was built on reclaimed land when Tokyo had hoped to stage a World's Fair there in 1996, but the event was cancelled after Tokyo's newly appointed mayor, previously a TV comic, pledged to cancel the event amid spiralling costs. 2121 Design Site, on the other hand, is found in one of the older parts of the city, with the original, as the exhibition describes itself, endowed with a fascination to ensure a lasting influence. The exhibition presents 150 objects earmarked as original, all selected by three figures at the forefront of contemporary Japanese design, including the pre-eminent industrial designer Naoto Fukusawa. Items range from pieces of furniture to tableware, textiles and even toys, and with them are images and writing, analysing each piece, documenting their selection and pointing at each connection on display. Indeed, many pieces date back more than 100 years, while others are more recent, from Joseph Hoffman's Series B wine decanter made in 1914, and the 16 Animali puzzle by Enzo Mari made in 1959, to the first post-it note from 1980 by Spencer Silver and Art Fry, and more recently the Robley Poly stool, designed by Faye Tugard in 2018. This is an exhibition about longevity as much as it is originality, and the Meet Your Art 2023 art fair pulls from the pool of contemporary art, hoping its young work on display will last just as long. The original 2121 design site opens today and runs until June 25th, while Meet Your Art 2023, otherwise titled Refactory, takes place at the Trader Warehouse in Shinagawa and opens today, ending Sunday, March the 5th. That's it for this episode of Notebook. Be sure to check in next week. And if you enjoyed this or any of the episodes so far this year and throughout 2022, you can rate us on Apple Podcasts or spread the word online. You can also email the Notebook team, notebook.podcast at gmail.com or leave a voice message at speakpipe.com forward slash notebook with thoughts for future episodes. Until next time though, thanks for listening. This has been Notebook. Notebook.